The first approach for calculating probabilities is known as the relative frequency approach, and here is the definition. You perform a random experiment n times. Typically, n is a large number, but it doesn't have to be. Let x be the number of times that the event a occurred. Then the ratio x divided by n is known as the relative frequency of the event a in the n experiments. We all do this from a young age, and that is we experiment with things, and if the outcome is positive, then we tend to repeat the things, and if the outcome is negative, we tend to not do so. Sometimes this can be a very expensive process. For example, if each experiment is crashing a test car into a wall, then n would be a very small integer. Here's example one. In this case, n can be a larger integer because this is not a very expensive experiment. Let's say you want to estimate the probability of heads for flipping a penny. Well, in this case, you can let n be some large number, maybe 50 or 100, and you can flip the penny uh, 50 or 100 times and either let it fall to the ground or let it fall on a table. And you count the number of times x that you get heads divided by the number of trials, and that's your estimate for flipping a penny. Now, there are other experiments. One of those is penny spinning. And in this case, you uh, set the uh, penny on edge Hold, on, hold it on top with uh, one finger and then flick it with a finger from the opposite hand. And uh, eventually that penny will stop spinning and will either fall heads or tails. And that might be a slightly different answer than the penny flipping experiment. Finally, a third way of doing this uh, experiment to determine the probability of heads is known as penny pounding which is you put it on a very flat surface on edge, you balance it, and then you pound the table. And when you pound the table, what will happen is the penny will either fall to heads or fall to tails, and you can estimate the probability of heads for that. Now, incidentally, the US government changed the uh, composition of pennies sometime around 1981 or 1982. And previously, they were all copper. And after that date, they were made of a copper alloy. And so it is quite possible you would get different results on an earlier versus a later penny. Here is another example of using relative frequency. The National Center for Health Statistics figured that the probability of dying in the next year for 20 to 24-year-olds is 0.0014 for men and 0.0005 for women. You can see that men are at about triple the risk here. But that's basically coming from a data set where they took n individuals in this age range and x was the number that died in that particular age range and that's how they got those numbers. Example three here is simulating the flipping of a fair coin 1,000 times by Monte Carlo simulation. And I'm going to go ahead and do this in the language R. And I will write the solution out. And then we'll actually go into R and take a look at it a little bit. So I'm going to put sum on the outside here. And I'll get to, I'll get to that in a minute. But I'll start with a function which is R unif. And the R in that function name stands for random. So it is going to generate a random variate. And the unif here stands for uniform. So it is going to generate random uniforms between 0 and 1. Those are the defaults. And we're going to generate 1,000 of them. So if you ignore sum for now and just look at our unif of, of 1,000, that will generate you 1,000 uniform zero ones, that is, random numbers that are equally likely between 0 and 1. Now, if we arbitrarily assume that those that are greater than 0.5 corresponds to a head, then what we're going to do at this point is we're going to generate a vector of 1,000 trues and falses. The trues will correspond to a head, and the falses will correspond to a tail. Well, when you add those up, you now get the number of heads in a 1,000 tosses. 
and that's X from the definition on the previous page. Finally, the last thing we have to do is divide by the number of trials, and that is divide by a thousand. And at this point, that will simulate the flipping of a fair coin 1,000 times by Monte Carlo simulation and estimating the probability of heads. Much quicker and much easier than doing the problem by hand. Let me go ahead and hide this slide and go into R. Now this is a version of R that I downloaded just a few minutes ago and up top here it will give you the version of R and we're using version 3.2.3 and then they will give you a name associated with the version. This one happens to be wooden Christmas tree. I don't know where they come up with these names but they're certainly a little more memorable than 3.2.3. I've seen socket to me and frisbee sailing and all kinds of strange names. But anyway, that's the uh, that's the entry into R. Then down at the bottom here, you will see a greater than symbol. This is a prompt, and R is looking for something from the user. And in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the R unit function. Now I could put in a thousand like this but unfortunately if I do that I am gonna fill the screen with a thousand values so let me just put in 10 so that way you can see them easily so right there is a call to the R unit function and as you can see as promised it's giving us 10 numbers that are between 0 and 1 here is the first one 0 0.09047 etc and here is the second one all the way up to the tenth one. Now this one tells you the first one is that value. The seven here tells you the seventh one is that particular value. And that is a vector of ten uniforms. Next let's try the following. Let's say we say our unif and we'll stick with ten coin tosses again. And let's say we say greater than 0.5. Now remember, when we call our unif 10 again, we're not going to get the same uniforms that we got in the first call. We'll get a different set of uniforms. And we'll ask, is each one greater than 0.5? Well, in this case, you can see what happened was we've got a true. That one was greater than 0.5. This one is a false. It was less than 0.5. Another false, a true. And this corresponds to heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads. And that's one particular string of heads and tails. Finally, if we wrap some around that, what it will do is it will add up the number of trues and falses. Again, remember it's generating a new set of 10 uniform zero ones and in this case we get four and you can run that any number of times let's run it again this time we get five another five seven so each time it uh, it is generating a fresh set of uniform zero ones so we'll get a a, a new set of uh, trues and falses and a different number of heads from one trial to the next Finally, the last thing we can do here is divide this by the number of trials, and we had 10 trials, and so that time we got a 0.6. By the way, I'm using the up arrow here to repeat the command. This time we get a 0.5 and a 0.8. Now let's go in and change these numbers. Let's change the number of trials to 1,000, and of course, correspondingly, we divide by 1,000. And now we get 0.482. Notice that we're doing the experiment more times so these numbers are hovering about 0.5 and they're staying fairly close to 0.5 as well.